Hey guys, it's Stefan here from Civils AI. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about all things relating to AI in construction and specifically in 2025. So I'm going to be making some quite bold uh, predictions and theories of what I think is going to happen this year. Okay, so without further ado, I'll start with my boldest prediction. In 2025, I think we're going to achieve artificial general intelligence. So what is artificial general intelligence? So we'll come over to Wikipedia and have a look at what this means. So artificial general intelligence is a type of artificial intelligence that matches or surpasses human cognitive capabilities across a wide range of cognitive tasks. So not only does it, is it able to perform many different tasks, but it can actually outperform us as humans. So what we have today with a lot of the foundational AI models, you have it kind of able to cover a whole wide range of tasks better than we can, but it has a quite a basic understanding, let's say, of all of these different fields. It doesn't have a PhD level of understanding of these topics. It can't create new breakthroughs. Or, but what this is really saying is that artificial general intelligence won't just be able to do this, but it'll be able to do this much better than we can. It'll be able to find and understand things that we can't as humans. So this is huge, right? This is like the holy grail of a lot of this uh, data science and AI research is trying to achieve, achieve this artificial general intelligence. And I think it's going to happen in 2025. So why do I say this? What are my theories? So, okay. So um, about a month ago, it hasn't even had that many views, I would say. Uh, OpenAI announced that they're releasing this O3 and O3 mini model. So this was back in January, December time that they started to announce this. And so why, why is this quite huge? So I'm going to talk you through some key points of this video in the launch and like what it really means. I'll kind of break it down. So um, basically, uh, yeah, they, they, they speak through about like what this uh, new O3 model can do. And one of the really amazing things, right, is um, this is some of the benchmarks which they use to, like, understand how good these new models are and to test them. And so what you found here, what they found here is this competition code. So this is for, like, writing Python, JavaScript, etc. And these software engineers enter competitions to see how good they are, and then they get a score at the end of it. So basically the best uh, score of anyone at OpenAI is 3000. This is some like chief scientist or chief uh, engineer, which they have. Uh, and they scored 3000. So basically this O3 model scored 2700. To put it in perspective, a lot of the engineers who are hired by OpenAI are like some of the best software engineers in the world. And a lot of them have a score around 2500 for this. So you see here that you know, O1 was the latest sort of state of the art foundational model before 1,800. So it's, uh, it wasn't as good as them back then, but this new model, you know, it's approaching the very best of the best that we have in, t in like the human race uh, coding. So you see, it's like almost there basically in this respect, but let's look at like some other, other types of benchmarks and I'll explain them and why it's quite amazing. Competition maths, PhD science questions, You'll see here again, it's like pushing further up. And typically the, the interesting thing about this is uh, for these PhD level science questions, typically actual PhDs in their field of strength get around 70%. So even the O1 model was close to what these PhD experts get in their own field. So this is like the best researchers which we have um, and it was already outperforming them, but now it's outperforming them even more. Uh, let's have a look at another one. So 424 is another interesting chart. So what you'll see here is uh, research maths. So this is frontier maths. Typically, these tasks, uh, to, to solve one of these professional maths problems, uh, they're your, uh, if you've seen the movie Beautiful Mind, for example, these are like your uh, very, very hard pro maths problems to solve, which could typically take hours or days or weeks for these top level ma mathematicians to be able to solve. And what you'll see here is there's been a huge leap forwards in these, um, these very challenging problems. So previously you had the O1 models, etc., which weren't really able to do these very well at all. And suddenly it's performing quite well. So another big leap forwards. 
the most interesting one I want to show you is there's actually a foundation which ca- which tries to decide if we've reached AGI or not. And they set these AI very hard problems for AI to try and solve, which supposedly um, you can't really solve unless you reach AGI. So the whole point of these problems they create is to try and prove have we reached AGI or not. So the concept with these is that each one, each problem is if you take a moment to try and understand, maybe you can even pause the video. The idea is you have an input here, you have an example output, and that gives you an indication of what perhaps is the algorithm or the way to solve the problem. If you look at this test input, then you provide this to the AG, uh, to the AI, and then you say, what's the output probably going to be? So if you look at this for a while, you'll probably start to realize perhaps it's the blue uh, the darker blue color gets filled in where you have these gaps present. So the actual solution to this is basically just filling dark blue into these empty empty squares here. This is typically very hard for an AI to understand because each one of these problems is unique. It, it, each one requires different skills and they're never replicated. They're never, they're never copied. So here's another one. Uh, and yeah, the idea here is you kind of count the width of the, the outside, uh, the, the, the extreme width of the outside, and then use that to color the outside of the squares. So again, this is like a different problem to the one which was just solved. Um, so each, each one of these is unique uh, in its own right. And therefore, you can't really train like an AI to be able to just copy these and replicate it because each one it will have never seen before. So it requires almost like uh, human level skills to be able to encounter a new challenge and decide for itself using its own knowledge, its own skills, what the solution might be. So they set these challenges and then they kind of measure what the uh, what the results are using their own benchmark. And so what you'll see here is these different models up until now that they tested. O1 series was the previous state of the art, which these foundational models were able to do. And you'll see here it's like 31%, 32%, the very best, one, best models we had before. Now if you look at this O3 series, you'll see it's all the way up at 87%. 0.5% of these problems which can be solved. So those two I just showed you, that's two problems. You so solve one of them, you get 50%. You solve both of them, you get 100%. So that's the way this works. And you'll see that the high end of this O3 model can solve 87.5%. This is really important because humans can solve around 85% of these. So your definition of what AGI is has been surpassed with this new model. It's up to you whether or not you think this is the way in which you should decide AGI. And there's some theories that the boundary for what AGI is will be constantly pushed forwards the more and more advanced these models get. So until it's built into robotics and to built into like physical real world stuff, um, it's like we'll constantly push the boundary of what AGI is. But according to some tests for this knowledge work, we've just already achieved AGI today because this O3 model was actually released today. So let's have a look now at what this means for the construction industry. And let's look at what could happen in 2025. Okay, so now let's take a look at some more construction specifics. So I've logged into Civil's AI. So this is the software we've been developing over the past three years. And uh, I'm going to show you how we plan to apply these foundational model breakthroughs into construction specific tasks. So here, after you log into Civil's AI, you'll see different projects set up here. I'm just going to open up one of these dummy projects and you'll see straight away different categories of how information is grouped together. So you can upload things like specifications, contracts, site investigations, drawings. Um, and then our system basically understands the content of that of those documents, those PDFs. Um, uh, we can run the system on your own network, on your own servers to get around like data privacy issues and things. Um, and then once that's, that, that's all processed, we have, we apply it into workflows um, and you can also quickly search through the information as well. So in terms of the search, I could just say um, summarize project scope. So what I've done here for this example pipeline project 
is I've upload, up already uploaded tender specifications, contracts and things. And then our system basically searches through all that information and generates this answer. So it's telling you about the nature of the project. It's all of this these pipes that need to be installed across the project, the different sizes and the different lengths of pipe which need to be installed. And also takes you to the section of the documents. So in this case, it's the specs, it takes you to the scope of work, um, and it also gives you all these references, right, where other information is that you can reference. Um, but what we're actually doing as well is applying this into workflows. So these are some no-code workflows for different tasks. So you'll see here tasks for bidding, site investigations, even custom workflows. I'm going <coughs> to... Sorry. I'm going to show you the contract risk assessment um, workflow. So in here... We actually, you, you can select which documents you want to reference and then which sort of pieces of information you want to search for, like headings and then tasks you want performing. So in this case, you are feeding in these different terms like change events, delays, liquidated damages, and then you're giving it a task. Draft a simple summary of this provision in plain English for a construction project manager. Do these provisions follow best practices? Score them out of 10. You can even reorder these however you want. Basically, whichever one's top here will be the task it performs first. So it works down these in order, completing each one of these tasks. I can select in this case, um, let's select some contracts. So I'm going to select a bunch of the different contracts here. And then I am going to give this a name. So I'm going to call it contract review. And then I'm going to hit run. And so this will start processing now. It will create a task that runs autonomously. In this case, it, I think it will take about um, 20 seconds to run. But if you add more information here, so all of this can be customized. And if you add more information or more task steps in here, it will take longer. Oh, so it's done it in 15 seconds. And then I can click here to view the outputs of this review. And in this case, it's generated me these different sections over here so change events delays liquidated damages i can click through these to view them all and it's then got these scores here right so score it out of 10 so for change event provisions it's nine out of 10 in terms of standardness um so this helps you go through all of these different contracts right gives you this summary in plain english so that you don't need to be a legal expert to understand um and then you can go through these. So you can look out for anything that may, may score low. Um, but in this case, I think that everything's like reasonably well, nine out of 10, uh, 8.5 out of 10. So yeah, and then the idea here is I can actually edit these as well. So let's say I want to add a new thing I wanna search for. I can actually just type this in here. Um, whatever filler text I want to search for, and connect these in. So all of this can be customized. So the thing in construction, right, is every project is slightly unique. So you can also customize these workflows, run them any way you want to, um, and even start with your own basic template. So you can start with a basic template like this, enter search term, enter task instruction. And we're going to be connecting this into all sorts of other software as well. So stay tuned because we're going to be bringing all of these AGI foundational breakthroughs into construction projects, helping you to automate tasks. To, to me, I think this is like the way to go with all of this technology. People are trying to like one shot the problems like generate me this, this risk assessment or this, um, you know, review just like, completely without any customization or or control but i think for for us like our belief is that these kinds of workflows are the way to do it um to allow people to understand it's not just a blank box you can follow and trace through all of the outputs so this is the way in which we're developing civils ai if you'd like to learn more about what we're doing um or you're interested in a trial just um, go onto our website and uh, check out check out civils ai um, and or, or reach out to us on by email or LinkedIn or anything really. Um, thank you for listening. And yeah, very exciting time to be an engineer or an architect or anyone in construction.